Andre Pirlo, Zidane, Xavi and Iniesta are some of the greatest midfielders in football history. They were known for their exceptional versatility. They seamlessly blended the art of dribbling, defence, prowess, lethal counter-attacks and delivering clutch goals when the stakes were highest. Here's a plot twist. What if I tell you there lived a midfielder who had crazier hair than Marcelo, who was sloppy when it came to defending, who had zero interest in scoring goals, and on top, he hated dribbling. And this isn't even the most shocking part. But then, he made passes reflecting Iniesta's sublime artistry, exhibited a supernatural ability to retain possession in the midfield, add to it a few skillful dribbles in dire situations, and this maestro was virtually impossible to dispossess. He brought in a different aura to the pitch, and given his particular style, you could spot him amongst a million people. He was Colombia's greatest ever. Carlos Valderrama, who brilliantly crafted a style of play that became a forerunner of Tiki Taka. It was called Toke Toke, a Colombian style of pass and move. It came from the word Toke, Spanish for touch, this style was born in Latin America, characterized by a relentless strategy. Exhaust and confuse the opposition by keeping the ball moving and first touch passing whenever feasible. The essence of Toke Toke was simplicity, yet the execution was nothing short of ruthless, and Carlos had mastered it like no one else. He was brilliant in the midfield. His tactical acumen, strategic positioning, adept game reading, Fluid movement and diverse passing range empowered him to carve out spaces for effective ball distribution and reception. This not only enabled him to dictate the team's tempo through quick, fast time passes in midfield, but also provided the opportunity to create scoring chances with precision. Apart from football, he had an eccentric personality and unmatched charisma. He was admired by millions of fans and football stars alike. David Beckham, for instance, was in awe of Carlos. In fact, after winning a group stage match against Colombia in the 1998 FIFA World Cup, he raced towards the Colombian legend and exchanged shirts with him as a token of respect and gratitude. Similarly, Ronaldinho made a special post admiring Valderrama's greatness. Um, I guess this much validation is more than enough, huh? Although Carlos was a special player, his upbringing was very ordinary. He was born in the small seaside town of Santa Maria, Colombia, during a time when Colombian football was in shambles. The country's national team was practically non-existent. Well, guess who inspired little Valderrama? His father and uncles. Jeez. Every day in Valderrama's life was identical. After school, he wasn't going home for lunch, he was rather taking trips to the beach and enjoying those sunbaths. Haha, <laughs> I'm just kidding. He was playing beach football for hours and hours until his legs gave up and he had no energy left. But more shocking is the fact that Carlos never played with a real football. It was his father who made the ball with newspaper, tied it tightly with rope so that it didn't lose its shape, then put glue to fix the rags until it had a perfectly round shape. Well, it proved to be a blessing in disguise. The ball didn't bounce, so it was very tough to control. This was where Carlos mastered the art of controlling the ball, and it was coupled with the beach games, which built his stamina, accuracy, and passes, owning his football skills to a whole new level. Oh, and if you guys want to enjoy unlimited football content and take our channel to a whole new level, don't forget to hit that sub button. As time passed by, Carlos became so good that he was called El Pibi, the kid. There was truly something about him. He had come out of nowhere and was destined to become someone no one had expected. But you see, all that glitters is not gold. Among all this, El Pibi had one problem, his rage and fury. He was a ticking time bomb and exploded more often than not, getting into frequent altercations until he took the law into his own hands and beat a police officer black and blue. Jeez. As expected, he was sent behind bars for more than two months. This is where the young boy contemplated. He had a dream, a longing desire that kept him awake at night, and it had taken away all his peace. Valderrama had seen his fellow Colombians supporting other football nations because Colombia had not qualified for the FIFA World Cup in 30 years. So he wanted a change. 
he wanted to give his fellow countrymen some hope, something to cheer for. As soon as he was released, Valderrama made his way to the Colombian national football team in 1985. From a small seaside town to the biggest stage in football, Valderrama pulled this one. But it was not until 1987 when he took his team to the Copa America and the Minos dominated the legendary Argentina team led by Diego Maradona, winning 2-1. This was one of the greatest wins in Colombian football history. You guys remember Saudi Arabia's win against Argentina in 2022? How did it feel? Well, it was the same for the Colombians. Eventually, Colombia finished third in the Copa America and Valderrama was named the player of the tournament above Diego Maradona. Man! The world finally knew the legend of Carlos Valderrama, a Colombian player who played like no one else. With this, the boy was ready to tread on foreign lands as he joined the French club Montpellier. In stark contrast to the style prevalent in Latin America, European football unfolded as a highly competitive arena where the essence of the game lay in dribbling and finishing. Initially, Carlos found himself in an environment where his distinctive style seemed somewhat irrelevant. The good thing about great players is that they adjust really fast. And hence, very soon, this man with a crazy hairstyle, a peculiar moustache and a very different style of play became the mainstay of the French club. His craftsmanship in the midfield became Montpellier's main arsenal. He was weaving a complex pattern of passes, leaving the opposition high and dry. At times, it felt like Carlos was allergic to the ball, but actually, it was his style of play. He was someone who wasn't interested in keeping the ball for long. He was selfless, and his only aim was to create unreal chances and top-notch openings for his team. He was quick, accurate, and sharp. This was Toke, which later on was called Tiki Taka, and it became the heart of the Spanish football team that won the 2010 FIFA World Cup. Jeez. As expected, Montpellier won the Coupe de France in 1990. At the same time, Valderrama was leading the Colombian national team in the 1990 FIFA World Cup, where he showed extreme finesse, and it was his midfield masterclass where he made a superb pass to Freddy Rincon and equalised against West Germany, eventually qualifying for the round of 16. Damn. And you guys might not know, but Carlos had one more advantage as he was unathletic and slow, and his opponents felt that it was very easy to control him. Well, thank you very much. This allowed Carlos to take them by surprise. He made elite passes to his teammates while never making a mistake. He was just so on point. Man was like a ninja. He was there, but he wasn't. He could easily take the ball away and defenders couldn't do much. So no matter how hard they went after him, Valderrama was too good to be caught. And in case they tried overpowering him, this man was a total beast, teeming with energy. So it wasn't a possibility either. Honestly, it was like he was never out there to score goals. His main purpose was to create chances and his stats speak for themselves. He made 672 club appearances and only scored 63 goals. Only if they'd kept a record of his passes, I bet he would have been in the record books. Hence, his legacy will live forever. He will be remembered as the guy who gave Colombian football a new life. It was under his captaincy that Colombia made it to three FIFA World Cups in 10 years. He was named in Pele's FIFA 100. He was also honoured as the Colombian Player of the Century in 1999. Among other honours, Carlos Valderrama won the South American Player of the Year award twice and was also named in World Soccer's 100 Greatest Footballers of All Time. Well, that was it for today's video. Hope you guys had fun and until next time, take care.